morning, friends. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Michelle Crisofoli. I am a first grade teacher in Central Florida. I have been teaching first grade for 17 years, so I'm glad that you're here. So today is not really a classroom setup video today. Uh, day. I'm going to be doing lots of uh, meetings and stuff. It's our first day of pre-planning and we do all of our meetings and everything virtually. So I'm gonna kind of be in and out and check in with you guys throughout the day. And I wanted to mention that we do have a winner of our TPT gift card giveaway. I will be announcing that at the end of this video. So stay tuned um, to the end to see if it's your name and I will be contacting that person this afternoon as well. Um, so I'm so excited that you guys are with me. I'm so excited that you have subscribed to my channel. And so yeah, um, I'm going to be kind of on and off today. I had to do these trainings and um, watch this stuff, but I did want to kind of do some things while um, I'm listening to the training. So I'll kind of give you updates throughout the day. Um, I'm going to do a final classroom tour video to kind of round out my setup series, um, but that'll probably be next week. Um, we have kind of gotten our schedule so far for next week. We have um, virtual meetings throughout the mornings and then in the afternoons, um, we have time to work in our classroom. We are doing a virtual meet the teacher night. So that's something that I'm gonna be um, preparing for. And once we find out more specifics on what that's gonna look like, I do already have a virtual classroom that's animated. So, um, sorry, um, I'll try to show that to you guys one day next week in an upcoming video. But yeah, um, not much has changed in the classroom since the last time I was here. I haven't done anything this morning. Um, we kind of walked the building and saw, you know, where stuff was moved to and that sort of thing. And I'm just now getting started. So. We're going to check in. I'm going to listen to some of these trainings. Um, I do have something else that I want to show you. I'll show you here in a little bit. Um, something that has changed yet again. I think that's going to be like the motto this year is, um, you know, just being flexible um, and accepting the change. And like I kept saying, like somebody asked me a question this morning. I was like, I don't know. I think that's going to be my phrase this year. I don't know. Because... <laughs> I don't think we know from day to day what, what's going on. Um, we just have to, you know, roll with it. So uh, maybe I can come up with a cute sharky phrase to to go with the way that this year is going to be. So, um, yeah, I'm going to get started on these trainings, and I will check back with you guys in just a little bit. Okay, guys. So I wanted to kind of give you an update. Um, I, first of all, I got a new camera. Um, I think this one will be much better. I know that the zooming, the automatic zoom function on my other camera was making noise in the background of some of my videos, so I apologize for that. Um, so I've got a new one. This is actually my daughter's camera. She used to do photography, so I just went and took it from her because she didn't do it anymore, so Mama took it back. <laughs> so um, I hope that this is a much better sound quality and um, I hope that the picture is a little bit more clear. So I brought a few things up today and I wanted to share with you what I've been doing and some things that I'm ordering um, and an update with my iPad. I wanted to share um, some things I figured out um, yesterday. So let me spin you around and show you what I've got. Okay, so I remembered my paper cutter. If you don't have one of these, this was the best investment I have ever made. It makes cutting out lamination and things in your classroom so much better. So I got that, and then I bought these off Amazon. These are lanyards, and my plan is to have them attached to my students' masks so that if they need to take off their mask to get a drink, if they go into the bathroom um, and they need to take off their mask to get a break um, from their mask, that sort of thing, at lunchtime, their mask is still attached, so they'll just wear their lanyard every day and it'll just be attached to their little earpiece. That way it's easy for them. They're not dropping them all over the floor. They can't trade masks. They can't put them over their eyes. You know, all those fun things that we're worried about, I think that this will help. We'll see. Um, those were like $6 on Amazon. I'll try to link them. Um, I bought a big thing of hand sanitizer just to get me started. I have like six of those. Um, but I wanted to go ahead and start bringing them in, even though we're going to be doing virtual. And I also brought my wireless mouse because I cannot stand using the pads on the laptops. So, um, I got a couple books. Let me take you over here. I got a couple books. 
um, that I ordered. I'm really excited about school's first day of school in our class as a family, and I thought this would be a really cute book for the actual first day of school when when we're back to face to face when you know our kids are here. Um, I think that'll be a really cute book, and then our class as a family, you know, that's a, it's another really cute book. So. My plan is to get on and start ordering um, some more books. Um, you know, I've showed you guys part of my collection of books, um, and I was going through it and I was trying to make a list because I want to make my library more diverse. Um, I did the Get Your Teach On training, um, the work, the conference um, that's virtual. I did that this summer. Um, and my very favorite um, speakers, my very favorite speakers were Naomi O'Brien and Lanisha Tab. Um, Naomi O'Brien is from Read Like a Rockstar and Lanisha is Education with an Apron. They did Perspective Through Picture Books and it was a two session training and it was fantastic. Probably the best um, one of the whole conference that I that I personally loved. Um, they talk about using more diverse picture books with your students so that our students um, can see themselves um, like a mirror in their what they're listening to and the reading and the books that they're being exposed to. And just listening to them talk, it just made me want to take a look at my collection of books and see how diverse my collection was. And I'm ashamed to say that after 17 years, I might have out of over 3,000 books, I might have maybe 50 to 100 that are pretty diverse. Um, but I want to increase that. So I'm going to start ordering books. I'm going to create an Amazon store. Um, of things that I'm ordering just so that if you are interested in what I have in my classroom and you want to go on and order stuff for your classroom so I don't have to keep linking stuff in the description box I'm just gonna link my store that way um, you can find what you need so I'm gonna do that over the weekend I think um, yeah so that's my plan is to start ordering books the first books on my list are they did actually did a lesson with um, a book called The Arabic Quilt, I think it was the name of it, and it was a phenomenal book, beautifully written, beautiful pictures, so I think I want to order that one. I I've, I've know of the book called The Name Jar, and I've seen it, and I, I thought I had it, but I can't find it. Maybe it was one of those books I checked out from the library one time, and then I am just forgot about. So I want to order that one. Um, and then there was a couple others. So I'm going to try to create an Amazon store of all the books that I'm going to start ordering or off of Scholastic. Um, and I will link both of their websites down below so you can check out their stuff, their blogs and their TPT store because they have a phenomenal set on TPT that I think I'm going to order called Windows and Mirrors. And it's basically like lesson plans with these books. I think it's going to be great. So I wanted to show you, before I check back in with my training, I wanted to show you an update <laughs> that I have with my iPad. I know I keep playing around with it and I keep showing you guys things um, on it and changing my mind and I, I think while I'm getting used to my iPad that's probably going to be the case, but I certainly didn't want to leave you guys in the dark with what I'm doing. I'm still playing around with my Apple Pencil versus the Logitech Crayon, so I wanted to show you what I've been up to. So I'm just going to keep my, my camera. I've been doing this with my tripod and my phone, but I'm just going to, I'm just going to do it this way. So I apologize for the glare that you might get a little bit of. So this is a different planner that I downloaded, um, and I will link it below. Um, oops. I forget that you have to have the pen off to switch pages. So this is a different planner. It works basically the same, but, um, it had a few other pages to it, so I downloaded it. Um, and then I also bought off Etsy, and I will definitely link these because they're super cute. I could have taken the time to create my own stickers, but look how many stickers. This this pack, I got 3,500 stickers for $11, um, which is how much I would spend for a sticker book. But this pack that I got has such cute stickers. I mean, 
y'all. Iced coffee, yes please. <laughs> and you know, you never know when you're going to use them. Um, all the stickers, but especially like the little holiday stickers. I love having little stickers throughout my planners. So I definitely wanted them on my digital planner. Um, and it's super easy, so I'll try to show you without shaking the camera too much. Um, for example, and here's another thing. Um, I'm still playing with the Apple Pencil. I decided to order gri a grip to go around the outside of it. It's so like a case. And this is working much better because the pencil was so thin and so slippery. It was hard to grip, but I love this. And it's in my color, so yeah. Um, so we'll keep playing with, the, with both of them, and I'll let you know which one I decide on. But So... There's the sticker page, right? And let's say I want to put the pumpkin, the jack-o'-lantern, on one of my pages. So look how easy this is, y'all. It's just like using a regular sticker. You use the lasso, you do a little circle, and then you tap it, and then you copy it. And then you go up to your planner. Oops. You go up to your planner. And internet's really slow today. Uh, I'm going to go to October. Look how slow our internet is, y'all. And I don't know why this would need to connect to the internet, but there it is. Okay, so there's that page. Okay, so let's say, I don't even know what day Halloween falls on. I think it's a Saturday, so let me put it here. Then you just press and hold. Well, you're going to make me a, a liar out of me. Why is my pencil not working now? Okay, let me try that again. Go back. Oh, because I was on erase. That's why. Sorry. I wasn't on lasso. I was on erase. So, paste. And then you can resize it, and then you have a sticker on your planner. Isn't that great? And so I can just decorate my planner all up with all my stickers. And there are so many in this set. Like I said, 3,500. I don't even know if I could use 3,500. So, $11, and I will definitely link this. So if you're going to do the digital planner and you want stickers, I searched and searched and searched and searched. Um, I searched all last night um, for different stickers. And... Uh, I just couldn't find the right ones, and then I kind of stumbled upon those. And so, I mean, for $11, 3500 stickers. And some of them I probably wouldn't use. I mean, they're different sets, like a wedding set and that sort of thing. But I'm sorry. I keep looking at my door because we have lots of people in the building today, and I'm worried that somebody's going to come knocking on my door. So, yeah. Um, okay, so that's the update. I'm still using the Apple Pencil. I'm playing around with it. I'm listening to my training. I brought in a few things I'm going to work on while I'm listening to my training. My, one of my crate seats, I didn't bring the other one back, but I'm going to work on it, and I'll show you that here in a minute. Okay, while I'm thinking about it, if you guys know where I can get these masks, um, mats, masks, mats, <laughs> um, I have looked everywhere so that I could make my class their own set. I wanted to purchase them myself and make my class their own set. And I, I know I could make them, but that, you know, this is somebody else's work. So, um, if you guys know that, I know that they're Kim Ad Sit, and I know she does the blog, um, kindergals.net, but I've looked everywhere. I've looked on her TVT page. I've looked through her, um, blog, and I don't know if I'm just not typing in the right thing or what. Um, so if you find these mats there's a whole ton of them and i want to make every kid in my classroom their own folder full of mats um, work mats that way they are not sharing um obviously so i've got six of each here and I, my plan is to have at least 10 more because i don't know what my class size is going to be at first but i would really like to do that so if you um know where I can find these or if you have them and you want to send me the link so that I can purchase them myself. Okay. <laughs> I wanted to show you what I got into. Um, these are my pocket charts. Um, those and then those over there in the corner. And I need to go through them because some of these pocket charts I have not pulled out. Gosh, in years. They've just been in this bag in case I needed one and it's time 
Um, so I was going to show you a few of them, show you what ones I'm keeping um, and my recommendations for the classroom and then the ones that you shouldn't mess with worrying about buying, that sort of thing. So those are sentence strips. I'm going to put those in my cabinet. So first of all, I have these two. These two are tabletop pocket charts and actually that one that's right there. This one as well is also a tabletop. Um, that one is a learning resources tabletop pocket chart. This one I think is also learning resources or it could be Lakeshore. This one is a Walmart one. Um, those two are very similar. Um, obviously that one was probably, I don't know, a couple bucks when I bought it. This one was probably 20 or so. I use both of them so I'm going to keep both of them. I do like tabletop pocket charts. I like to set one up in a writing center. I might have cards on it, like a sentence that's scrambled and the students have to unscramble the sentence and then rewrite the sentence and then draw a picture to go with the sentence. And then they can flip it over and there's cards on the back and they can do the same thing. So I like having those. I like having lots of options, obviously for a reading group and for different centers. You could even put it in like a word work center where you have different cards that match up or you have them sort. So those are great to have. This is one of my little cheapos that I bought several years ago from one of the dollar places. So I don't know if I'm gonna keep that one or not. And here's another one. This one's a little bit more sturdy. I think these were from Target, if I remember. But unlike the Dollar Tree ones, the plastic is a lot stronger. So those always hang up on my board. Those are the ones that I would hang. I don't know if I'm going to keep those. I'm going to put those in a maybe pile. Move those to the middle. Put those in a maybe pile. These are for sure I'm getting rid of. Um, this one is just so worn out. It's a long one. I used to keep my students like ID tags in there and they would walk over and grab their tag. But you can see it's yellow and it's filthy and I just don't have time to mess with cleaning it so I'm going to see maybe another teacher wants it. Um, you know, you can do like uh, lots of different questions of the day on it and have them move their stuff to that. This one is it's got that yellow film. It's very old. It's probably one of the first pocket charts that was gifted to me. But you can see it's dark so that when the words went in there, they just turn a different color. It's just old. Again, I'm going to gift that to somebody or trash it. And then this one is black. These are black. So again, I'm pretty sure this was gifted to me. And, you know, there's just... I, I, I haven't used it since I got it. And that's probably been 10 years ago. So those are going... Um, this is a sound sort, blends one, and I love this one, so I'm going to keep that one. I don't know if we'll be able to use it this year, but I always put that one in a center and let them sort whatever sound we're working on. And just like this one, this is the Fact Family House. This is a great one when you're doing Fact Families to have. Um, may not be able to use these this year, but I'm definitely keeping them. This is part of a three-piece set. It's the yellow, blue, and green set, I think, or yellow, red, yellow, red, and green set. Anyway, they Velcro to each other, and you can make one big chart out of it, or um, just use the little pieces, and I always use them as little pieces. So that's going to stay. They're all bent, so that's not a good thing. This is a cheap fabric-y one that I got. It's all like bent up. I got this one here. You can put file folders in it, but I don't even know if I can get it unfolded because it's, yeah, see? It's been so long since I, you know, you buy them and then I used them for a year. Like I put this one on one of my cabinets and then I had like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday in it. Um, and I've seen some teachers use these for like absent work. I guess I could do that and just put it over on my filing cabinet, but usually, let's see if I can zoom in. 
other direction. Oh, this has got a slow zoom. <laughs> Way across the room. So if you see that thing over there, I don't know if it's going to focus on it or not, but that that's where I keep all my work. Um, I will try to insert the little mini video I did of that right now. Okay. So I was going to make a separate video for this, but I think I'll just explain what this little system is right here. And I told you um, that there was a funny story that went with this. So a couple years back, we, um, our vice principal wanted us to be a little bit more organized with like our daily papers as so we were turning in lesson plans. And then when they would come do like walk arounds in our room, they would want to see what papers went with the lesson plans that they had. And so she ordered us all these. And the funny part of that, that is I hated it. I hated it back then. I didn't like my, I wanted my system, which was like file folders and, um, they were put away in like a little bit more organized system and they weren't sitting out. And I, like threw a big old baby teacher fit over this thing and then after using it for a couple of weeks I was like man this is really great I have Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday on Tuesday I'll walk over I'll grab Tuesday's bin it'll sit on my desk and it has all of my papers that I need and in each little rubbery file folder it's like se sectioned out with like ELA math science writing word study whatever the things are that I need and I thought it was great and I was like man I threw a big old baby fit but it was just because of change y'all it was like I had to change and um I liked my old system and I didn't want to change I was wanting to be stubborn over it and it turned out to be a great system for me so when I moved from Arkansas down to Florida and I was trying to decide whether or not I wanted to go back to my old system. I was like, nope. And I spent my own money on this sucker and bought one. I think they're from Lakeshore. I'll try to find it. But And bought it myself so that I could reorganize. Because I tell you what, so when um, Friday, Thursday, Friday comes around and I'm planning out for next week and trying to figure out what I'm doing and I submit... Um, copies or I get copies put to me I just put them directly in and any games that we do or any hands-on things they would just go in the bin and so here's Wednesday and I'm ready to pull my bin and I just keep it over on my desk and then at the end of the day I file it right back and if there's something that's like two weeks out that I have ahead of time then I use my other system which wasn't a very good system after all because it was a mess this year but I would just use these and so if I had something that was for like Wednesday in two weeks I would just put it in the to file box and then when it got to be that point in time at the end of the week I would just clean it out and put it back over there and it worked out great so I realized oh bad glare I realized that I needed to be open to change it was a big learning lesson for me after having been doing the same thing, which I like to update things and I like to learn new strategies and change, but there was just something about coming out of my box for my organization. It's the same thing that happened when I had to have a teacher's desk back in my room. I hate teacher's desks. I don't want one, but then last year when I had one in my room, I was like, okay, I'm sitting at this thing a little bit more than I thought. Not during the day because I don't sit down during the school day. I'm always constantly moving, but at the end of the day, when I would go get stacks of papers, instead of taking those papers home and sitting on my couch and grading, it forced me to just sit at my desk, do a quick check, grade through some things, or sit on my computer and plan some things. And it just worked out a little bit better than I thought. Would I get rid of it if I could? Yes, I would get rid of the teacher desk if I could. But it just kind of showed me that I should be open to change and open to new ideas um, as far as like organization and like my teacher box goes. Because, you know, as a teacher, I change and I do different things all the time. Um, every year, I, you know, I never do the same lesson, um, you know, I don't do it twice the same way. I don't teach things the same way every year. You always grow and you change and you get better. But with my organization and how I wanted my system to be and how I wanted it to be set up, I was being such a big brat over it. Not to anybody in particular, but just to myself and probably my husband. But I actually really liked it. And so then when we moved here, I went out and bought one myself. <laughs> so 
it just goes to show that there are, you know, great things, great ideas can come from anywhere. And it can be in any form. So, yeah. I of that right now. But I could put that one, I could put this one over there with the absent work. But I keep all of my papers in there. So if they're absent, I usually just go to that thing. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to keep it. We're going to get rid of it. Um, this is a pocket chart stand that I made. I'll try to show you guys sometime. Oh my gosh. Do y'all remember overhead projectors? So this was the overhead projector pocket chart that wrapped around the overhead projector. For a long time after we got rid of our overhead projectors, I still use this for different things in the classroom. But I, again, have not used that in years, so it needs to go. This is Word Families pocket chart. So the word families just like the blends. So that's staying. Here's a mini yellow one. It's like my green one that I have hanging on the board right now. So that's staying. I'm going to actually put that right there so that I can. Here's an orange one. This is a cheap orange one that I think I got from Target or something one year. And I bought it and never used it. But it's got thin bands. So I'll keep it for a little bit at least and see what I need to do with it. Bulletin board that I never used. Okay, sorry about that. A friend came in, and so I had to stop really fast. Um, I don't know, remember where I was I left off at. I think I was talking about the orange one, how I was going to keep it. Um, I wanted to show you guys this one. This is one of those shape ones that's just not very helpful. It's not very useful. Um, I used to put like a poem on it or like a question of the day. But it's not very big, and I haven't used it in years, so I think I'm going to get rid of this one. I think I'm going to get rid of that one. Um, and then this is a big, tall chart that I used to use for centers. So my students, oh, not that one. My cent kids' names would be on the sharks. And then their center assignments would be on here, so they had center one, center two, center three. And then they would just go that, and then I could lift these up because they're Velcroed, and just rotate them each day. I just moved them down one. Um, but I'm not going to be using that system this year. I am going to keep the chart. But I'm not going to be using that system because obviously we won't be rotating like that. So, And then this red one is like the green one. If you can see that. So, And there's the Velcro. It attaches to the other one. So you can make a really long pocket chart or you can just use segments of it. Which is what I've always done. So yeah, those are my pocket charts. Oh, I have these two over here. So, this is another just plain blue one. Oh, it's ripped. Okay, so it needs to go. There's a whole big old rip in that one. That one needs to go. That one, I think, is from Walmart. That's a cheapo one. This is one I used to use in my poetry center. I had the poems. Sorry, I turned the camera funny. I had the poems on there. And then on the back, I had papers in the little... This is another one of those file folder ones. I had papers in this that they would get to do the activities with the poems. So this was hanging on a, a shower rod thing in my room, my old room. So I'm going to keep that one because I might use it again. And then the last one is the vowel sounds sort one. So I'm going to keep that one. So I've gotten rid of a couple. I'm pretty happy with my choices. Those are definitely keeps. Those are keeps. Those are my um, tabletop ones. Those are maybe as I'm still thinking about, and those are all going. I did want to show you one other one that was buried over here. Um, this is just the number chart, pocket chart. Um, and if you ever lose any of the cards, they're always available online. Lots of people um, have sets of them out there for free just to print off so you can redo them. Because I didn't have the cards originally when I got this one. Um, and I colored the, the um, fives red and the kind of a tense blue just to make it pop but I pull this one out from time to time and use it I used to have it hanging on my calendar um, well but it takes up a good chunk of space so I opted to just use a poster um, but it's always good to have so that's another good one okay um, I wanted to show you the little box labels I just made um, I made them for this size box, but I think they'll fit on the other one. I may put these or something similar in my TPT store. 
My TP store is practically empty. I've just kind of started making stuff for it. I'm really bad about making stuff and then using, you know, clip art from Google or something. So I want to get better about that because I have so much stuff that I make, but I can't sell it. So I need to like redo some stuff. Anyway, these are the letterbox labels that I just made for the front of these, and I'll put the student number on the corner there. I'll just write those in, but I think think those work. I'll just hot glue those down, and I think that'll work. And then they can have their own litter box. Okay, so these are my choices um, if I wanted to sell this. What do you guys think? So this, let's see if I can work this in. There you go. Oh, okay. I think that's about as close as I can get because of the glare. Anyway, this is one option to use those. It's got little eyeballs on it. To use those. Or this is a heart, but you can't really tell that it's letters. Let me see if I can make it bigger. Once you shrink it down, see the letters there? But once you shrink it down, it doesn't look like it. It just kind of looks like a mosaic heart. And to make it fit on those letter boxes, it would need to be about that big. And you can't really tell. So those are the three choices if I wanted to sell this. What do y'all think? Um, also, let me know before I go through all of this making these. I'm going to make these and some math box ones. Let me know if this would be even something that you think teachers would be interested in. Um, yeah, so let me know. Okay, so I made the math box one also real quick. What do we think? I think that looks cute. Let me know if this is something you want also, and I will put it in my store. Okay, so I'm in between trainings right now, so I thought I would visit with you guys for just a second. I wanted to show you, I've been creating those labels for my letter boxes that I showed you in my last classroom setup video, and my math boxes, I created those, um, and I showed you this earlier, but I also have, and this is already in my TPT store, this is what I was telling you about. Um, couple days ago this is how I identify my students school boxes so we have school boxes on our list and since in the past we've done flexible seating and my students were sitting all over the room you know everybody's blue school box all looks the same and I got tired of writing their names in a sharpie on there I wanted something kind of cute and I used to use I don't know if you guys know these these the name plates um, that you would attach to the desk and I can remember hunting down contact paper at Walmart and putting the name plates on with contact paper and what a mess that made and they'd always peel up or whatever on the end so I, I made name plates that go on their school boxes so I thought I'd show those to you that's what they look like they're um, I hot glue them down I put their name right here it has a 120 chart it has a number line it has an alphabet line has all their colors and basic shapes and then it also has a little left and right hand um, <clears throat> and I put those I glue those down to their um, school boxes so I wanted to show those to you it is in my TPT store I think I got it for like a dollar dollar fifty something like that my TPT store I will link it down below if you want those but they are fantastic I love doing that I love having those, so I wanted to share that with you. Um, what else? I'm working on the boxes. I'm about to go warm up 
my lunch um, and then I'm going to sit down for my next training session and while I'm listening to the next training session I'm going to play around with my pen I'm going to work on some of my plans for next week for all of our trainings because we have kind of a, a hodgepodge week and I'm going to finish laminating yeah I think I think that's all I can do right now so I'm kind of stuck in limbo so I will check back in with you guys okay hi guys um so I'm finished with another training I have one more at 2 30 my word wall just fell down but while I've been listening I've been working so I wanted to show you sorry what I've been doing let me show you this so I've updated my calendar basically complete I had to take down a few things everything just wouldn't fit like I wanted it to so since we're not in class I just took down the schedule I went ahead and added um, those are actually old old I can statements but I just put them up there so we could see um, yeah I lost my train of thought sorry so that's where we're at on that and then this is gonna be my sound wall I got the border up so I got that done now let me show you oh I wanted to show you something else too I'm thinking about it okay so I got one crate seat covered um, and it's got the plastic on it and this is just a shower curtain it was a little bit cumbersome to get on but if it means that the seats are protected then I can deal with it it worked pretty well so it is covered so yay for that um, I wanted to show you these little things uh, let me show you this first because I have it sitting on the top. Um, so this is what my sound wall is going to look like. I've had a sound wall for many, many years, but I've never had one this pretty. So just bit the bullet and purchased this one so that everything um, lines up and matches and looks cute. <laughs> so there. But it's like 200 pages, so it's going to take me some time to print it. I ran out of paper here. Um, so I have to wait. But these are the little plastic pockets that you slide papers in and, you know, it makes everything to where they can write on it and wipe it. Um, I love these, but I need to go through and clean them really well. So while I'm listening to my next training, I'm going to clean them. Some of them have student names on it. Um, so I'm going to try to get the name off with my, um, Goo Gone stuff that I have. The, the it's really strong like graffiti type stuff um, I'm gonna try to get those off I'll try to show you while I'm doing it I'll try to do a video of that while I'm doing it I'm just gonna go through and clean all of them because they are pretty dirty but I have so many of them so I don't want to don't want to throw them away and these are always those are always a good thing to go ahead and purchase when you see them um, I know Dollar Tree sells them for a dollar each, but to me that's not a good deal because you can get a pack of them on Amazon for like eight bucks and you get like 15 of them. So that's not a really good deal. Unless you're just really needing them in that moment, I wouldn't buy them from the Dollar Tree. Plus I think they're a thinner plastic and I'm not sure they wipe off as well. But I always order mine from Amazon. I'll get like a, a big pack. One year I used them for their take home book bags. So they would put their book in there and their reading log and that's what went back and forth for their book bag but we found that the books fell out of it so when like a student puts it in upside down in a backpack the book would fall out um, and then they might lose the book so I nixed that that year and last year I bought oh, God, I just found yay okay I was worried about that oh, last year even know if they're in here. I bought these little plastic um, take-home bags. I'll try to link them down below. Um, in years past, I've used these for their book bags. I don't know if you can see that, but they are from Resources for Reading, and they're quite expensive. 
and then when the kid tears them or loses them, then, you know, you're out the money. And so last year I had plastic ones. I think I actually might have one that I threw away earlier. I'll see if I can find it. You know, and then if it gets nasty and destroyed, yeah. If it gets nasty and destroyed, then you don't have to worry about it. But I got these, and I'll link these. These are from Amazon, and you get, like, a big pack for, like, next to nothing. And they're plastic, but they have the little snap on it so that's an idea and then if when they get you know nasty and you can just throw them away it's no big deal whereas the ones from resources for reading um, my students would lose them and I would be like bummed every dang time because it was they're expensive they're, it's like five for twenty five dollars or twenty eight dollars and you're getting five so in order to get a full class set I was spending you know sixty dollars seventy dollars so yeah, um, I don't obviously think that we'll be doing take home bags anytime soon, but when we do go back to them, I'm just going to reorder those again and get another class set. Um, but we have used these before for them, that's why I have a student name on them. Like I said, the books would fall out, so that's not really helpful. So, I'm going to clean these off, clean the names off of them, take some of the papers out that I need to, um, and listen to my next training. My next training is supposed to go until 4, but I need to get home to my children, so I will probably check in with you guys in a little while, um, and update you on where we're at, what's going on for the weekend, and who won the TBT gift card. So I'll see you. guys so I have just finished my training um, I'm getting ready to head out of here I got quite a bit done let me show you what I was up to today while I was listening to the training this is all done so I will um, I'll have that video inserted here of me putting that up but that's gonna be my So I have just finished my training. Um, I'm getting ready to head out of here. I got quite a bit done. Let me show you what I was up to today while I was listening to the training. This is all done. So I will um, I'll have that video inserted here of me putting that up. But that's going to be my word wall. Um, so sight words and stuff will go up there except if the sight word has a different sound then obviously we'll talk about the different beginning sound and it'll be on the sound wall so I showed you what my sound wall is going to be like um, I've got to do my letter boxes so I've got all of my tags for those two things cut out I'm gonna do that on Monday while we're listening to training I kinda clean up this area so I went ahead and hung this magnetic thing that I said I wasn't going to hang I went ahead and hung that because I thought 
if I have five or six kids in the class, then I can easily do centers around the room um, and keep them separated. They'll just be doing independently, uh, independent centers, I should say. So I hung that. We'll see, but there's no harm in hanging it. I think it's a good spot. Um, I went ahead and put the books on there. I showed you my calendar. So I showed you that I found these. I finished my numbers, so those are hanging now. Um, a couple of you asked about these. I just got these from Walmart. They're um, in the um, bath section, I think. Kitchen section? I can't remember. I'll try to link them in the description. So that's that. Focus wall is checked off my list. Pretty happy about that. I'm going to finish those on Monday. We're going to get all the pieces for that. So yeah, this is what we're looking like. Desk has still got stuff on it, but we're making it. I went ahead and stacked my other mailbox system over here. I don't know where I'm going to put it. If I'm going to separate them out, what I'm going to do, I may end up putting one of them back over here just to keep them separated. But we don't know our class numbers right now. It's looking like... 65 to 70 something percentage of our students chose to do learning at home so we may have some pretty low numbers for the first nine weeks but that's everything so far so this is where we stand with everything all this stuff just kind of gets filed away and put away oh that's those books that still have to go to the library I'll talk about what I do with this stuff next week so yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling a lot better today than I was when I got in here. Um, the trainings that we had today were good. I just don't know that I'm ready to think about some of that stuff yet. It's some of the trainings that we went to or like for later on down the road or, you know, it's just, a, it's really a hard pill to swallow because you don't yet know what's going on. So I don't know that I took notes, but I don't know that I'll be able to apply anything for a while. So I'm headed home. Actually, I'm headed to the store, and then I'm headed home. I'm, I think I'm going to try to go to Walmart and Michael's before I head Thank home tonight. You um, so I just wanted to say thank you for all for some of my driving so far. Enjoying and commenting on I am videos for and so black content. Um, um, as promised, so I hit 100. At subscriber mark want to 500 um, subscribe thank you to one of my wanted subscribers by gift safe a tpt gift card and being a so last night we hit the 500 mark i was like Woo let me go on and pick me um somebody so i had a random thing uh website that went in and picked and the winner is drum roll michelle gay science teacher michelle gay science teacher so if you will email me your um just say hello from your email so that i can email you the virtual gift card um or you can comment in this video and send me your email it's up to you but my email is iheartprimary1 at gmail.com that's iheartprimary1 at gmail.com so michelle gay congratulations i'm so thankful that you are a subscriber of mine and i think i'm going to do another giveaway when we reach that 1000 subscriber mark so y'all stay um tuned for that but other than that i hope that you all have a wonderful relaxing weekend i'm not going to do anything school related this weekend well that's probably not true because you know how we are but i'm going to try not to do anything school related this weekend i'm just going to enjoy my weekend i might lay in my pajamas all weekend and watch criminal minds reruns i don't know <laughs> so i hope that you have a wonderful weekend